Hello, and welcome to RegoFix Tech Chat. My name is David McHenry. I am the Engineering and Technical Manager here at RegoFix USA. One of the most common questions we get asked about our tools or anybody else's tools is what is the best way to clean them? So let's take a few moments and look at some options. We are all guilty of not properly taking care of our tool holders, whether it be letting them rust, not coating them with preservative, not cleaning them properly, they all end up showing, well, a little bit of rust and corrosion. So what's the best way to clean those? And then after they're clean, how do I preserve them? So let's spend the next few minutes and let's talk about that. Most commonly, we see shops that have you know, a tool holder like this. This is a Cat 40 ER32, and I intentionally rusted this one, but it's got lots of flash rust on it. Now, generally, we see that the guy in the tool crib or the CNC attendant, he just grabs some Scotch-Brite and he just does his little magic on it and he makes it look a lot better. The only problem is, well, I'm human, I'm not perfect, and I'm not going to apply the same pressure all the way around while I'm cleaning this, meaning I could actually damage the material and add TIR to it. Now, Scotch-Brite's a lot better than putting the rusty tool holder up into your spindle, but it's not the best application or process for you. Well, that's where something like this comes in. And this is a taper cleaner. It has a motorized base, interchangeable canopies, Inside those canopies, I have three different brushes. The brushes are nylon that are chemically coated with an abrasive, and this rubs on the tool holder and it removes the, the corrosion and the rust that's on there. But it doesn't remove material. It just glides across, cleaning everything the best possible way. That allows you to take that tool holder, put it back up into that new CNC, and make it last longer, let alone it looks a lot better when it's not rusted. But how does it work? So let's take that same rusty tool holder, let's put it into the canopy, lock it down with a little thumb wheel, and on the front I have a timer. I'm currently set for three minutes. So let's see what that tool holder looks like after three minutes. Now that the unit is finished, Let's take a look and see what that tool holder looks like. So you can see already bright, shiny, big difference from what you see down here to what you can still see at the top of the tool holder. Now, it'd be nice to make this look, look brand new again, but it's not as important as making sure that taper, which makes contact with your spindle, looks good, is clean, and rust-free. So let's do a side-by-side -side comparison so you can see just how good of a job the taper cleaner did compared to what was there to start with. Well, not every tool that you have in your shop needs something as aggressive as a taper cleaner. Most of your tools you can clean really easily with a set of towels, some lightweight oil, clean them off in between each application, and you're ready to go. For those applications or shops that just don't have the time to wipe every tool holder off, something like an ultrasonic machine with a basket that you can put your collets or tool holders in is a very good option. Put the tool holders in, drop them in, hit the timer, it cleans it while you're doing something else. Again, lots of different options that you have to choose from for cleaning. Everything from the ultrasonic, doing it yourself, the taper cleaner, and if you really had to, you still have the Scotch-Brite. Just be aware it's not very consistent. So after I've gone through this entire process, how do I preserve them? Well, let's talk about that. Now that we've talked about how to properly clean the tool holders, what do you do about preserving them? Because not all tool holders go right back into the machining center. Some of them need to go into storage, short term and long term, depending on when they are used for your specific applications. That's where oils and cleaners come into play. Now, 
there's a lot of different options in the market. Everything from the WD-40s to the LPSs to the slides to the Brunoxes, there's a large variety. I'm not gonna tell you which one to pick, but I am gonna give you some suggestions on what to look for and apply to your tool holders. Now, if you are doing a tool holder or cleaning a tool holder that is used very frequently, you don't need an oil that's gonna stick around for a long time. It can be a short-term type of oil. It can be one of the simple sprays that does evaporate over time, but will give you a couple weeks of good coverage and protect that tool holder. Like I said, lots of different options to choose from. Talk to your local RegoFix distributor. I'm positive they have an oil line that can help you. Now, what about long-term? I want the holder to be on the shelf. It may not get used for a month or two. It's a special application. That's where something with a little bit more staying power would be used. You need an oil that's going to not only coat the tool holder, but not evaporate. You don't want it so thin, it just all runs off. It needs to be kind of one of those nice 30 weight type of oils. You spray it on, put it in your tool storage. It should be just fine when it's time to pull that tool back out and put it back into service. When that time comes, you have to go through the cleaning process all over again. You want to get all that preservative off to make sure you get the best TIR and clamping force possible with your ER, power grip, or other tooling systems you might be using. So, in short, make sure you take care of your tool holders, clean them properly, whether it be with a taper cleaner or an ultrasonic. When you're done with those, make sure you preserve them properly. You want them to last. They were made to last. Lots of care and precision went into those tool holders. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to contact RegoFix. Our tech team is here to answer any of your questions. Again, my name is David McHenry. Thank you for joining us.